everybody ready? What? I don't care about expensive things, cashmere coats or diamond rings don't mean a thing. All I care about is love, that's what I'm here for. I don't care for wearing silk cravats, ruby studs, satin spats, don't mean a thing. All I care about is love. Give me two eyes of blue, softly saying, when I see her standing there, honest mister, I'm a millionaire. I don't care for any fine attire, Vanderbilt might admire. No, no, not me. All I care about is love. And maybe you think I'm talking about physical love. Well, I'm not, not just physical love. There's other kinds of love, like love of justice, love of legal procedure, Love of lending your hand to someone who really needs you. Love of your fellow man. That's the kind of love I'm talking about. And physical love ain't so bad either. <laughs> it may sound odd, but all I care about is love. Bum, 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 bum. Boom, 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 honest to God, all I care about is love. Show me long raven hair flowing down about to there. When I see her running free, keep your money, that's enough for me. All I care about is booing the guy in who's picking on you, twisting the wrist that's turning the screw. All I care about is I feel really sorry for the sound guy because he's wearing his headphones and I know that when I'm going for it, he's, going to pull he's like, oh, I pull apologize. Out. Is that going to be distorted or is it all right? He's, he's like, like it's all good. It's all good. Guys, welcome. We are at the Phoenix Jazz Bar, which is upstairs at the Phoenix Theater here where Chicago is currently playing with the fabulous Duncan James. Congrats. That was awesome. Thank you very much. How, how does it feel to be doing this iconic? You're back. You're back I'm in back. The Yeah, I mean, I did it 11 years ago, which uh, is quite surreal because I don't really remember what I was doing last week, let alone 11 years ago. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, but I was here, apparently, doing it, and uh, I was working with the gorgeous Josephina Gabrielle, who's actually been back as... Uh, Velma Kelly this run, yeah. so it's been quite nice working with her again because she was my first ever Roxy, so it's been lovely coming back and having some familiar faces in the cast. How does it, does it change uh, with other people? Like, does the dynamic change? Massively. The... It's so interesting because um, every single person plays the parts very, very differently, and the energy on stage changes because of that actor, what they bring to it. So if you have, for instance, somebody like Alex Burke, who brings so much energy <laughs> to the part, um, for me, it's great because she gives me so much mm -hmm. and her energy is, is so um, amazing to work with. So it gives me the energy as well and it, it makes me have that kind of fun on stage as well, which I love. Yeah. Um, but then you have different actors bring different types of energy. So you kind of adapt to what that person gives you and it's, it's really interesting. It's cool too because it, it makes it audiences keep coming back to the show because they yeah. do see something different. Yeah. Right? They, it, 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 you never see the same production twice. No. It, it's it, it's an incredible iconic role too, mm. right? Like, tell me, like, yeah. do you uh, what is it like playing this character? And then tell me a little bit, like, do you feel like you can relate to him at all? Um, what I love about Billy is um, it's such a great part. It's so much fun. And this time around, I wanted to. My understanding of him was very different to how I played it ten years ago. Obviously, I'm forty years old now. When I did it before, I was I was twenty nine, and you know, you have different 
you go through different stages in your life, don't you? And, yeah. and, and, and mentally you grow in different places. So now when I read the script, I was reading the script very different to how I read it 11 years ago. And you make different kind of acting choices and, th and your thought process is very different because you look at it and analyze it very differently, yeah. especially now being a middle-aged man as I am. So, I mean, I... He's not looking middle-aged. I like yeah. literally... I'm, I'm middle-aged. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it cool on camera, but I was like, 42! Yeah. Oh, you look good. I bet, you. Are you like really 29? You just want people to be like, you look yeah. good. <laughs> it's all the surgery I've had. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, 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 and, and I just, you know, I really enjoy, I really enjoy playing Billy, and this time around I wanted to give him a kind of a matinee idol look, so I've given myself a moustache, and I remember coming down for the first day in the cast, and I was like, does it work, is it too much, and yeah. I was like, no, 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 keep it, it, it works, it's yeah. great, so I, uh, my Billy has a, a moustache, obviously oh. I, I get rid of the beard, yeah, so yeah. I, yeah, the beard yeah. kind of, uh, well, moustache is never too much, but it's kind of like that, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, but I wanted I wanted to have you know, and I wanted to just create this Billy a little bit different. And uh, every time I walk past the Phoenix Theatre, I see a picture of me up outside the building where I look like a ten year old, and it just makes uh, me cringe. And I'm uh, like, oh my god, they need to get rid of that picture, but uh, it's still there. <laughs> uh, so there many <laughs> so many amazing songs in this show. Which is your favorite? That's not yours. Okay, there's so many amazing. I think it's yeah. just one of the best scores out there for yeah. any musical. Um, um, I love uh, a song that Velma Kelly and uh, Mama Morton sing, which is called Class. I just love it. It's so beautiful, and I love the harmonies that they do together, and I love the way that it's performed, especially um, by these two ladies, which I think are going to sing it for you now. That is so such a great segue. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Duncan, thank you so much. Thank you so much, much. guys. Give thank it you. up for Duncan James. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Maz, Laura, come on up here and take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, class. Whatever happened to fair dealing and pure ethics and nice manners? Why is it everyone now is a pain in the ass? Whatever happened to class? Class. Whatever happened to please, may I? And yes, thank you. And how charming. Now every son of a bitch is a snake in the grass. the doors there ain't no ladies now there's only pigs and a horse and even kids will knock you down so they can pass nobody's got no class whatever happened to old values and fine morals and good breeding now no one even says oops when they're passing their gas. Whatever happened to class? Class. Oh, there ain't no gentleman that's fit for any use. And any girl a touch of privates for a deuce. And even kids will kick your shins. And, and even kids will kick your shins. Nobody's got no class. All you read about today is rape and theft. Jesus Christ! Ain't there no decency left? Nobody's got no class. Everybody you watch has got his brains in his crotch. Holy crap, holy crap, what a shame, what a shame, what, what became, became
Oh my God, isn't, it, isn't that song incredible? You guys do such an amazing job with that song. It's so, um, I'm obsessed with that song because I feel like, you know, it being set in the 20s, but written in the 70s, yet it feels so contemporary, yeah, it's right? Timeless. It's, yeah. it's timeless, it's yeah. timeless. Why is it, and why does it feel like it's like, you're sort of talking about like people today? What, it, what is it about it? I, I do think it's a generational thing as well, you know, my, my parents do it to me, like, oh, and in my day, and, <laughs> you know, I think that's been something that's yeah. just been around for forever. Yeah. Definitely. I, lo I love the irony that's attached to the song. Yeah. Because, obviously, in the show, we don't have a lot of class. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, she's a murderess, you hey, know, hey. I'm out just to get her money, yet all we're preoccupied is how people say please and thank you. Yeah. Meanwhile, we're yeah. totally shafting each other all the time. <laughs> so I just, I just love the irony of these crass, you know, the behavior of this, w these women are, is disgusting. Yeah. yeah. But yet we're, you know, people should be classy. Yeah. 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 Um, how do you, how do you bring it, make it yourself? How do you, how, how do you bring yourself into these roles? I think, for me, um, Velma is such an iconic, iconic role like that I've always wanted to play mm. and um, and I find her really fascinating I really do um, I think she's she's very clever and very very classy or she thinks she's very classy but there's a there's ins inside her that I imagine her like a little there's a like little hamster in a wheel inside going on always thinking always thinking but she doesn't show anything on the surface and I really admire that I think she's just so cool. It's such a joy to, to play to play her. What about you with the role of Mama Morton? Well, the, the only person that I've seen play it was my sister, Gina. Oh. So Gina Murray, who played, she's played it seven times. So when I got the role, she just went, don't copy me. So <laughs> I was like, quite right. So I've had to totally not do anything that she did. And if I feel I'm remotely like my sister, then I just change it. Has she, like, was she... Did she catch you on anything yet? Was she like... She came to see it, yeah. yeah did she was she like that. She was like, yeah, that's good. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing it. You've done yeah. it completely differently. Yeah. Has she been like... Has she, has she like called the producers and be like, listen, if you need... Like, I'm available if she gets sick or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she, she'd actually just broken her leg on my opening night. So it was like a scene oh. of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels when he's in the wheelchair going, that used to be my girl. She, <laughs> she's there with her leg up going, it's my job! <laughs> But no, she's great. She's on the mend. <laughs> um, I love the idea. Uh, we were talking earlier, uh, like what roles you guys would play if you guys. Not that I'm saying you guys will ever go to prison, but if you ever did, like what what would your roles be? <laughs> oh, I'd be like Scrappy Doo. Oh really? I think, I think out of terror. <laughs> I think if I got cornered, I, that's how I'd. I, you don't and you don't think it as well. You think oh, I'm a fairly normal person. I yeah. should react quite well, but I think I would end up being like Scrappy, just got the fear all the time. Yeah, yeah. N never calm. Yeah. Don't sleep. One yeah. eye open, like <laughs> terrified for my life. Yeah. A shiv in the back pocket, just in case. Just in case. <laughs> oh just in case. What would your uh, fashion my own knife? What would your ma <laughs> Mary uh, murderous name be then? Ooh, something really sad like, oh Florence or something. <laughs> I think. If I, if I went to prison, yeah. Poor, poor Florence in Florence. the corner, terrified for her life at all times. Yeah. Scared to eat. I feel, <laughs> I feel bad for anyone named Florence right now. Because exactly. it would be like, exactly. more. more. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Exactly. What about you? I'm, oh. so, I'm so nervous about what you're going to say, though. Like, <laughs> I would start a prison theatre company. <laughs> <laughs> and I would audition all the ladies see who's got a really good belt and then I'd find a show and I would devise it and they would call me Bigger M. Yeah. <laughs> I would audition. I would audition. Definitely. And then I would take away all the violence and it would just be about, you know, who can hit the top E. And then, uh, <laughs> would, would the theatre, <laughs> would the theatre company have it? <laughs> no it, petty crime here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sing that. <laughs> what would the theatre uh, company name be? <gasps> Mazzes. Oh, uh, I, I, get, I don't know, yeah. I love that. Oh my God, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for Thank doing you. this and giving us a performance. Thank you. That was awesome. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you're watching right now, to like, share, subscribe, tweet, post, all of it. Uh, but before that, <laughs> I want to introduce the fabulous, the lovely, 
Alexandra Burke. Give it up! <laughs> Take it away. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong, but he doesn't care. He'll string along, he loves me so, that funny honey of mine. Sometimes I'm down, and sometimes I'm up, but he follows round like some droopy eye pup. He loves me so, that funny honey of mine. He ain't no chic, that's no great physique. And Lord knows he ain't got the smarts. But look at that soul, I tell you that hole is a whole lot greater than the sum of his parts. And if you knew him like me, I know you'd agree. What if the world slandered my name? Why, he'd be right there, taking the blame. He loves me so, and it all suits me fine. me so, that funny honey of mine. Lord knows he ain't got the smarts. Now he shot off his trap. I can't stand that sap. Look at him go, ratting on me with just one more brain. What a half wit he'd be. If they string me up, I'll know. I'll know who bought the twine. That scummy, crummy, dummy. I mean, like, I can't believe you get uh, th these songs every night, like, classic. Like, how does it feel to be playing Roxy in Chicago? i tell you something. It's, uh, I know it's really cliche to say something like this, but it is a dream come true because I will never forget in 2015 when I took a trip to New York, I was doing The Bodyguard. Yeah. And um, which is I fabulous. saw, yeah, which is so much oh fun. <laughs> but I saw that Chicago obviously was on Broadway, yeah. and um, and Brandy is someone I've idolized from oh. a very young age. Mm. And I remember going to my now fiance Josh and saying to him, "We have to go see, we have to go see her, we have to go see her." So there I am sitting down, not really taking everything in until everyone came on stage, and then there was Brandy, and I nudged Josh and went, "Yeah, babe, that's me, that's uh, that's my role." He looked at me and went, a "Bit ambitious." <laughs> <laughs> So, I was, I was like, no, 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 you've got to start somewhere. He goes, well, you're quite early in your theatre career, so it's a bit ambitious to think you're going to be on that kind of legendary show. I said, yeah? Okay, watch this space. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and don't worry, he was very happy for me, but, you know, you? But that's why you have to be careful. What you put in the universe is what you get right back to. So, positivity, 
positive thinking gets you far. Because look where we are today. It is so. It is so true. Yeah. I feel like that's also like something Roxy would would believe in, right? Like yes. she'd be and like, the you more know people what? tell you you can't do something, yeah. that's what Roxy's about. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm like as well. That's yeah. our only similar trait. Yeah. Um, the more people say to me, oh, you know, I've had so many people say to me, this role wasn't for me. They didn't think it suited me. Yeah. And because so many people said that to me, I was like, no, I really want to try it because yeah. it's my dream. Yeah. And, you know, I just, to be able to be in the West End mm. and do an, an, a, such an iconic show and be a part of such a wonderful team, is mesmerizing because I go on stage every day, I kid you not, the most hyper, happiest girl. And if they can vouch for me, honestly, I get in so much trouble. I get in so much, yeah, absolutely. And yesterday, you should have seen me, they were singing class, they don't know this, they were singing class. And there's me, we've got like a little workout place at the back. And you know one of them big round balls that you can do like, oh. I fell off of it. I just started rolling around and then fell off the floor. Yeah, I fell on the floor. Seriously, I'm, I'm a nutcase. Absolute nutter, but it's because I'm happy. <laughs> what else happened? Like, is there a lot of like, uh, you guys go out? Like, is there lots of fun stuff that happens um, backstage? Well, we always go out for like little lunches in between shows Ooh. and stuff, and we always take each other and go, "Who wants coffee?" And yeah. then the other day, you know, um, Laura was going to me, "Oh, you know, I just, I just need a tea." So I got, I got her a box of tea. So whatever we all need, we all just look out for each other, and I think that's what's important when, when you're part of a team and you're part of a show, you know, it doesn't matter what name is at the front. It doesn't really matter. Everyone works as hard as each other, and you have to look out for one another because. Everyone, you know, people go through stuff in day-to-day -day life and mm. we turn up to work and my main concern, the other day, Laura Vachemi, we went down on a little lift and I turned to her and went, that is why we do this. This is why we do this. Because the cheering, the screaming, oh. the applause, it was so like, it was, it was unbelievable. And that's why we do this, because we want to put a smile on people's faces and make them happy. And no show is ever the same. So it's come every day, because it's always different. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting. Help us get that full house <laughs> at the front. Yes, that's right, come every day. Get it's always now. different. Yeah. I may even wear a different headpiece tomorrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's so interesting. When I saw it, it's so fun to hear audiences sort of like, you know, give you a little like, mm-hmm, or a, oh yes. no, you know, like it's like well, there's a Laura done her one and someone shouted, bravo, bravo, do you remember? <laughs> and I, I swear to God it was my mum's mate. And I, was, <laughs> I, I forgot to ask him, but he's that kind of guy that will cheer people on. We love it. Yeah. Gives us so much energy and spirit. Like we feed off of that. We take that in and go, they're an amazing audience. Give it even more. It's Stacey so may not want me to say that, but yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. We give more. All right, finally, what's your favorite song? I mean, there's so many good ones, right? Not like, mine, though, right? Yeah, not yours. Not mine. The, the other okay, ones, right? I'm going to say, when Velma takes a stand, because I think it's pure jokes. It's so <laughs> much jokes. I get to sit there, and she's, like, giving it to Billy Flynn, and her legs lifting. Oh, Sister Act as well is, is, another, is another fave. But when Velma takes a stand, <laughs> Laura goes on, and she's like, Come on, Duncan, give me attention. I come on and just try and ruin it. It's brilliant. Yeah. Absolute <laughs> brilliant. But the one we do to get our duet, it's, it's, yeah. it's so much fun. And you're incredible in it. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much for it. doing this. I love it. Thank you so this. much. Thank you for having all of us. And see Chicago at the Phoenix Theater. Can we give it up Every for night is Alex? different. Remember that. <laughs> come every night, eight shows a week. Yes. <laughs> We're turning that into a gif. <laughs> Gif it, gif it. Yeah. <laughs> Who's got their boomerang? <laughs> uh, all right, guys, give it up for the cast. Uh, Chicago. Come on in. Come on in. Yeah. I'm going to rouge my knees and roll my stockings down. And all that jazz.